Well, hello everyone, as you start to uh, join us. Uh, my name is William Davis, and I am the Director of Education for Wilson Daniels. And here in just a moment, we are going to have Claire Lefleur Jacques from Cloud and Nell uh, joining us here. And forgive me, I'm going to uh, scroll because there are a lot of photos and images on my screen. So, Thanks for everybody joining us. Again, my name is William Davis. I am the Director of Education for Wilson Daniels, and we're gonna be joined here in just a moment with uh, the uh, lovely young lady here, Claire, Claire Laflave Jacques, uh, and we're gonna be delving into uh, this little region of uh, Anjou, and specifically just south of some more Champigny. Um, so I see Claire here. Good to see you. So let's see if I can get her on and we will go live. So uh, Cloudanel has uh, been around for uh, not too long. Um, we received the, they, they started changing the name in 2008 and I am trying to figure out why she is, why it is freezing over here on my end. For some strange reason it's doing that. So let's see if I can get her on. Hmm, looks like I am having, there we go. Sorry about that. As always, uh, sometimes you get a little bit of technical difficulty, you know, even with the uh, with the iPads. So uh, we're waiting for her to come on. Hello. Hello, my dear. How are you? How are you? I am well. So Good. Uh, it looks like a beautiful day out there in the vineyards in uh, uh, in, in Anjou and specifically uh, Ambiu Chateau. So yes. uh, how how are you doing? How has your day been? I'm good. I'm actually sit uh, on the on the ground, just uh, with the sun in my face. That's perfect with the wine. Oh, very nice. Yeah, and I just uh, I just arrived today in Crenel, and I, I visited. Uh, I was visited Tessa La Roche uh, just before. Oh, so, great! Yeah, it was nice. Well, wonderful. So, yeah. um, you know, actually, you know, since you're there, why don't you give us a little bit of overview of you know what Anjou is like, uh, what it's like to be there in between Anjou tour and, you know, how, um, a little bit of a background of the history of how your family ended up uh, yeah. in uh, an area very far away from Burgundy. Yeah, very far away. Yeah, this, this is a, a very original and, uh, and very cool human story, Clonel. Uh, Clonel, my mother, no decided to to boat Clonel in 2008 so um, uh, the beginning of the story uh, it was my mother and my father opened uh, in 2006 a little company uh, with Claude and, uh, and Lydia Bourguignon names Clack it's yes. uh, the first uh, letter of uh, Anne Claude, Christian, Lydia, and Claude. Anne Claude, and uh, the this company, uh, it was uh, the the goal of this company was to help the young winemaker in dynamic wines, in dynamic culture, to sell their wine uh, in the world with the help of the my of my mother name. So uh, during this uh, moment, uh, during, during this moment, she, she met Claude and Nelly Pichard. That's why the name is Claude Nell, is Claude and Nelly. It was a young couple, couple uh, had a Claude Nell before, uh, before 2000. And uh, they turned the winery in dynamic culture in 2000. So today we are in dynamic culture uh, since 20 years. Uh, and um, uh, this couple, so uh, in dynamic uh, since 2000, 
was in big, big difficulties because they do very strange things. They stop uh, burning, burning the, the vineyard and uh, do something like that. So uh, the winery uh, was in, in horrible condition and uh, they had a small productivity, etc., etc. So my mother decided to help them. Uh, she bought the winery uh, in order to give them back uh, after refresh, just for help them. And uh, during this moment, she, she was still uh, worked uh, at uh, Le Fleuve at uh, puy A few, few months after, uh, it didn't work with the couple, and my parents decided to keep the winery alone in 2008. So she had been working with the, you know, with, with Claude and Nell and Nelly uh, for almost eight years, right? Just for, yeah, one yeah. year, right. yeah, exactly. Uh, just one vintage, and uh, during, during the first vintage in 2009, she met uh, Sylvain Potin, the, uh, at this moment, uh, 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 very lovely, uh, a uh, young man uh, uh, was um, a long, young, very young man with lots of uh, dynamic uh, experiences in Chile. Yep. And uh, she hide, hide, hide yeah, him yep. in uh, in ten minutes in the vineyard. So today is uh, is still here and is the 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 manager of, of the winery because we we still together. My my father and me uh, live in uh, in Bonin Burgundy. That's it. And uh, my mother was very, was in love with this winery. It was uh, her, um, her liberty, her, just uh, her, her break to, to come there. And uh, so that's why we, we continue the, the adventure. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you talk about your mother and it was her liberty, it was her, uh, the way for her to be free uh, in many ways from, you know, having to, you know, of years and of decades of making, uh, you know, Chardonnay or Pinot Noir and starting to work with other different grape varieties and, and work with uh, Sorry. a new region. No, it's okay. I'm sure that the sun, <laughs> you know, because, you know, you know, for everyone that's out there, uh, I believe that Claire is... Uh, you, you're probably looking uh, west, you know, as, as the yeah. uh, sunset. So, um, you know, because she's at the top of the, uh, the hill directly behind on the north side of where the winery is located. So there's a slow gradation of a hill uh, just to the north. So um, yeah, she's exactly. at the top of that uh, nearby the new vineyards of uh, uh, Chanel. Ba uh, baby Chanel, yeah. Here in, in, in just a moment. Uh, but going back to you know your 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 mother and you said that it was a liberty it was a uh, a freedom for her yeah did she well, ever recall some of these stories you know the excitement that she had and the reasons why she felt that this location was so exciting yeah exactly yeah she it, um the domain le fleur was very big and with many many members of the family. So, so Clonel is very different because we are just uh, my, mo my mother, my father, and my three sisters. And that's it. And it's very freedom for her to, when, when she was here, uh, to decide uh, that she wants. I see. Now, don't mind me. There's a very frisky cat below me that she is uh, playing around. And so if there's any background noise, my apologies. So, you know, it seems like you've recently uh, moved into more of an operation role uh, at Cloud and Nell. So tell us a little bit of how you got involved personally with the winery. Uh, for this winery, uh, I'm in charge of, uh, of communication and uh, uh, of uh, selling wine in France. So exactly, I am... Uh, I, I do prospecting with the French agents and sometimes uh, in the world I, I do um, a wine fair or prospecting too. And uh, yes, and masterclass, etc. 
sí. uh, and yeah I I I do all the allocation in France for all the agents because we have one agent in one region in France so we have many person yeah and uh, I'm actually uh, do some some stuff in uh, Clonel I'm going in Clonel uh, um, twice a year uh, and uh, I I do I, I do vinification and harvest and uh, tasting for the violets for the blend uh, and uh, yeah right. so you do a little bit of everything yeah I try <laughs> Well, you know, uh, you know, talking about that and coming from a winemaking family, yeah. uh, what are some of the things that you have, you know, learned, you know, with the uh, fermentations of, uh, of, of these Loire Valley grape varieties? You know, uh, is it, has it been an eye-opening experience for you compared to what you may have experienced and, and seen at the winery in Puligny, for example? N not really, because uh, I'm in the wine world since just four years, just after so just my most short period my, of time. Yeah, yeah, just uh, uh, I, I I loved wine when I was twenty twenty three years old, just a few days before my mother passed away, and before that I was uh, studying uh, design, and uh, I was very lost uh, about my future. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so I can compare the, the two winery because I have not really big experience in, uh, in Puni Morache. I did uh, one vintage uh, last year and in my life I did um, four, four vintages, but uh, one in, uh, in Burgundy, in Domaine d'Angerville. Uh, and uh, one in Australia, okay. and, uh, and two in uh, in the Clonmel. I see. Yeah. Well, you talked about design, um, and uh, here's a label image of the uh, the Cloudanel. So, yeah, you know, actually, let's talk a little bit about the the background of the label itself for Cloudanel. Um, where were the origins of the label, uh, and who designed it? Uh, the label was already here when we bought the winery. But uh, the label is a bird. It's a phoenix, exactly. And my mother uh, decided uh, to uh, keep it uh, because uh, for her, it's uh, this kind of myth This kind of bird is very mythic and magic and means a lot uh, of things for us. For her at this moment, uh, the the phoenix it's uh, it's a bird rising from these ashes, you know. Yeah. Oh, as as a phoenix. Yeah, phoenix. Yeah, and the phoenix uh, rising from these ashes. And uh, for my mother, it makes sense uh, because the winery before Claude uh, and Lydia, no, not not Claude and Lydia, um, Claude uh, Claude and Nelly Pichard. I see. Uh, was was with someone else and take a new turn with Claude and Lydia and a new, new turn with my mother. So it's like a, a reverse, like a phoenix. And uh, for the other wines, the red wines, the logo is not exactly the same. I don't know if you have a, a photo. Uh, the difference with the Chenin is the, um, the phoenix. Yes. Yeah, you, you you see the other bottles. Yeah, chin. <laughs> you see the other red bottles with the yes. the the face inside the circle. Yes. So here for everyone, this is an uh, image yeah, yeah. of Perfect. the uh, the darker of, of the uh, red wines. So you'll actually see that the the phoenix. Yeah, and is much larger and much more pronounced on the uh, Chenin bottle. Yeah, and so we decided to to change. The, the label just for the Chenin uh, because my mother uh, decided to plant uh, a white wine in 2012 because uh, we start uh, with just eight hectares of red wine, Grolot, Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. 
And uh, for the first vintage of Chenin, uh, 2015, we decided to change because uh, it was her Heidi to have this cuvee. And we bottling the bottle end of April and she passed away uh, at uh, the begin beginning of April 2015. Uh, and um, for... For me, uh, it's, a, it's a perfect uh, image because uh, uh, the, f the phoenix gets out the circle and yes. it's, a, it's a symbol of the emancip emancipation mm -hmm. compared to her way of thinking, speaking freely, freely about dynamic wine, for example, or uh, everything like that. No, it's, it, it is a wonderful story. And uh, uh, there was a small group of us, actually, that were there um, that met with uh, met with Sylvan um, yes. the the day, unfortunately, of your uh, of your mother's funeral, and we were at Claudinel that 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 evening having uh, dinner with him. He drove back from from Puligny, uh to meet with us. Okay. And, and yeah, and it was it, it it was a it was a beautiful way for us to pay tribute, um, you know, in in light that uh, of what she has done and of what. The, uh, the new property signifies and what it means. Uh, because for, for many of you, if you can see the uh, map here, you know, when we were first there, um, the, the Chenin in the, in the yellow plots that you see behind me, um, those, are rel those are the part of the new plantings. Uh, and the 2012, 2013, and that 14, I believe, were still labeled as Samur. They were not labeled as, a, as an Anjou. So it's it's nice to see how uh, how much has been done to the property and that there's still growth and uh, you know a uh, a movement with the Chenin. So you know, talking about the 2017 Chenin yeah. specifically, yeah. Um, and you've had a chance to taste you know the previous vintages. Tell us a yeah. little bit about the 17 the 2017 vintage, as well as the style of this wine compared to some of the previous Chenins that were made at Cloud Nell. Yeah, that you said uh, it's the third, it's the third vintage of Chenin, uh, 2017. And the 17 was pretty, pretty warm in Clonel, less than 18, but pretty warm. And uh, what do you think about this one? Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't have the, um, it's very bright in its primary, mm. but it doesn't necessarily have that tension that I found with either the 2014 or the 2016. You know, there's a little bit more of those candied fruit notes. 14, you, would... you said? Yes, yeah. 14, I had 14, it, to have some it, of the 14, ah. but from a... You know, again, it, it was from a slightly different plot when it was still labeled. As yeah, a different plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fifteen vintage, it to me the seventeen is a is almost a blend in in its personality of the two thousand and fifteen and the two thousand and sixteen because it okay. has this ripe fruit. Um, it has more of these uh, tropical fruit notes, but the acidity and the tension is still there. Where that was a. Uh, that, that was a, a characteristic that I found in the 2016 vintage, that it was very, uh, very tense, very wound up. Um, here, it's a little bit more forgiving. So it mm. reminds me more of the 2015. Okay. For me, yes, I I'm, I'm very agree with you. Uh, for me, there is a very, very high, not high, but very natural acidity yep. with the, because of the soil of the, of the silex. Uh, and uh, limestone, uh, and there is a very, it, for me, it, there is a lot of of lemon touch than f fifteen, mm. more acidity, more fresh, freshness, and uh, for the for the white, we we pick uh, the um, just the gold uh, grape, mm -hmm. and we we we. We do a, a big uh, sorting directly in the vineyard to 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 take the the, the best uh, grape, mm -hmm. 
and uh, for that we we keep uh, maybe a, a pre precision yeah it's uh, it's a fascinating you know wine because it's not one of these wines like Savignier where it tends to be driven with just weight and you know power but sometimes with a little bit of botrytis I don't mm. get that ever with the wines from Cloudinel. They there's a freshness, but yeah. the weight is still there. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And uh, we have like uh, for me a, a burgundy touch, like um, apricot and um, peach. So we said uh, citrus fruits and uh, acacia. Yes. And uh, slightly uh, uh, vanilla and toast the slide, side sorry side <laughs> for me. Uh, from the, the Burgundy barrel, Burgundy vinification, because we do uh, a batonnage and uh, we, we do the malolactic too. And my mother decided really to keep the same vinification than the main Lefleur. So, so for that one, it's uh, 12 months in, uh, in the barrel. And uh, so we pick the, the grape and the grape go in the winery, and we do a, a pneumatic press for very slow for four, four, four hours. And after that, we do a cold salting. And after that, uh, the wine go to, to barrel for 12 months, and after six months in the tank, and we do batonnage and malolactic. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's funny because it also doesn't have that that overt oxidative note that yeah. you find with other Chenin. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, I remember the, the 2013, 2014 vintages that were, they weren't transferred to tank. They were yeah. in oak and then to bottle. There was a different uh, feel to those wines. The wines were, you know, you could see, even see it in the color where there was a little bit of oxidation, you know, mm -hmm. rather than there still being freshness driving the wine when it was released and you're, you're very lucky because i tried just once the the fontenay 2014 mm. i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> it's okay we we were <laughs> in the right place at the right time uh, you know and it was uh you know back in 2015 where we were tasting um uh we actually tasted some chenin out of barrel with Sylvain. Mm -hmm. um so you know what you know, we, we haven't re really ever talked about uh, cuisine and how uh, these wines would pair with cuisines and foods that are Cuisine, local. ah, cooking, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, so what types of cuisine, you know, classic cuisines would you find in, in, in the Loire? Because it is, you know, the Jardin de la France, you know, it is the, it is the garden of France. Um, what would you pair this with? Uh, for me, uh, my favorite meals for Chenin, it's uh, scallops okay. with uh, vanilla butter. It's just amazing. Um, it's, it's, sorry, I have a very, oh, very that's quite now. all right. 20%, but it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, scallops, yeah, and for me, all the, the, the white sea fish can, uh, can, uh, can do a, a, a good match uh, with butter sauce, <laughs> because it's very, very fresh. It's always good with butter. <laughs> yeah. With the little vegetables, just grilled, still a little bit raw, you know? Just, uh, and, the, and the homemade mashed potatoes. Yeah. Oh. Mm. I can it's see amazing. with all of the weight and the, uh, the the vegetable kind of these green notes that you might find in your vegetables. It's yeah, a great yeah, way yeah, to exactly. offset not only the acidity, but also bring out some of the fruit in the uh, wine. Yeah, yeah, that. exactly. Yes, but my favorite is scallops with vanilla butter. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, not, not, you know not, not, not any butters from any other region. You know, it would be, uh, you know, some of the local butters, maybe Normandy for, uh, for butter. Yes. Yeah. So moving into um, red wines, you know, uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, Grollo as mm -hmm. a grape variety. Um, now, Grollo, it's usually used for Rosé d'Anjou. 
but there are a number of producers, yourself included, that are now making Grollo in a red wine style. So walk us through what you do with the Grollo on the uh, estate and what makes the Grollo uh, from the vineyard so unique. Um, so unique. <laughs> so the, the Grollo, for, for the people who don't, don't know Grollo, it's a very typical variety in Loire Valley and uh, is, very, is known for rosé and sparkling wines. Uh, and uh, we have actually uh, three hectares of, uh, of uh, Grolo. So we decided to vinify the, the Grolo like uh, another grape variety, like mm -hmm. Cabernet Franc or Cabernet Sauvignon. And we, we do uh, a long aging in a barrel, around 11 to 12 months. 50% in a barrel, 50% in a, in a tank. And after we, we blend it together for six months. Uh, for me, the, the Grolo is um, is very pleasant variety. He, he makes me think of, of a little part of Gamay because it's very big berries, very fine skin. And we pick the Grolo at the same time as the Chenin. And uh, he, he offers in palette uh, a little uh, uh, baskets of red fruits, uh, like a cherry, like a raspberry, uh, raspberry, and also a complexity with uh, a spices uh, and acidity. And uh, the Grolo, for me, is not like... A, a red intense wine is not like a white wine, it's not a gamay, but it's between a gamay and more intense wine. Mm. And it's perfect for me uh, at uh, the beginning of the dinner, like with a tapas, like a cheese with ch chutney, with a little yeah. touch of sugar, uh, charcuterie in France, <laughs> uh, like uh, hum hummus. And uh, I don't know what we... I don't know, in, in English, uh, uh, confit, vegetables yes. confit, yep. you know, like uh, uh, pe pepper, white, uh, green pepper, etc. Uh, it's, uh, it's with the garlic, etc., you, you know. Or, or uh, a meal, an incredible meal for a uh, grolo. It's in English, I hope it's that. It's black pudding. Yes. W with yeah. apple sauce. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, so, it's uh, very good. We found a lot of uh, black pudding in England as well. Yeah, okay, so, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're you, certainly you, familiar with it. You are trying a Grolo now? I am, I am. Okay. And, you know, with the, uh, with the Grolo, it's, uh, you're right. I mean, uh, when you think about Grolo being uh, a progeny of the, uh, of the Gouet Blanc, so, you know, there are similarities, uh, not only to uh, Pinot Noir or to Gamay, but you also have these because you know Cabernet Franc, Cabernet uh, Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc are all part of that arm. So where you will have those beautiful red fruits, you will you know have some of the characteristics of what we consider to be Burgundian grape varieties. You also have the characteristics of the Bordeaux grape varieties. Yeah. You know, so where it's a wonderful mix of 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 both um, uh, of, of, of both genotype. You know, as mm -hmm. as a whole. You know, where you can. It's, it's a, a hodgepodge where you get, you know, uh, aromas of, uh, you know, uh, green and black pepper and peppercorn uh, along with, you know, some of those, you know, bright red fruits, a little bit of sage, a little bit of thyme. Uh, but the acidity is still there in a way that you don't necessarily associate uh, with Bordeaux grape varieties. You associate it more uh, with uh, grape varieties from Burgundy. It's, um, I think that, you know, uh, pork tenderloin is a uh, fantastic way to go here. It also works very well uh, with uh, pork tenderloin with a coffee rub or, um, you know, a veal or game that have a coffee rub as well, uh, because it's got the acidity to stand up to some of the, um, uh, the, 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 the tannin and the fat, you know, in the, um, uh, in terms of blending, you know, those two together. Yeah, and for me, uh, it's very deep wine because uh, because the the vine are, are, um, 
are uh, sorry uh 100 years old mm. uh so it's very very old vines and the the wine have a very very good identity of the terroir and for me it's just very very beautiful no they it, it is it's a delicious wine there's not a lot of it that's produced um but if you're looking for a classic uh a very unique uh, Grollo, because um, again, there isn't that much of it, uh, you know, there's plenty of it planted. There's very little red, red Grollo that's made. So uh, definitely uh, look out for it. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the Cuvée Villette. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. Um, yeah. Is there any difference in the winemaking in terms of that approach? to the other wines um, or because of the additional weight, is there something that, that's done differently? Sorry? Uh, is there sorry. something that's done differently with those two great varieties in winemaking than there is with uh, what we would find with the Grollo or the Chenin? Different way? Or, or the blend of uh, Violet? Yes. Uh, sorry, I don't understand your question. But okay. The, the so, difference with, with Cabernet Franc too? No, no, no. So from a winemaking perspective, uh, do you age the Cabernet ah, Franc okay, 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 okay. longer, okay, okay. Sorry. less um, okay. than the Grollo and the, uh, the, the Chenin? The Cabernet Franc, we picked all the Cabernet Franc uh, at the same time. So we have five hectares. And uh, we do... Uh, between 15 to 25 days in maceration, just the Cabernet Franc. Uh, we don't do uh, any extraction, just just a few turnover, a few pigeage, but quite, quite like that. And after that, uh, we put the wines uh, in, uh, in a barrel for 12 months. And it's the same process for Cabernet Sauvignon. And we put the Cabernet Sauvignon in a, in a barrel just for Cabernet Sauvignon. And after that, we, we, we do a, a, a big meeting with the team to, to try to do a, a blind test with, uh, uh, with uh, each barrel of Cabernet Franc and each barrel of Cabernet Sauvignon. And we decided uh, together uh, the blend of Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon. We try to find a good balance, and the difference of 100% of Cabernet Franc, the QV uh, Cabernet Franc, uh, the, 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 the Cabernet Sauvignon had more complexity and uh, more black fruits and, uh, and uh, more structure. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and you, you certainly get it with uh, this. And I am actually, uh, I'm not tasting the current releases. I decided to open up uh, some slightly older bottles. So I have the 2014 Cuvée Violette. Okay. okay. Uh, because I think, that, I think that Loire Valley wines are, especially the reds, and when they have the structure of the wines that Cloudenel has produced historically, that they are candidates for ageability. They they age very well. They uh, yeah, they, they, and, and we always enjoy those uh, those secondary those tertiary notes uh, with some of these wines instead of it just being very primary. Uh, you no, know, I call it. It's, it's all about fruit and not necessarily about some of the uh, developmental notes that you'll find in the wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, the Violet is, uh, so you, you, tr you tried the 2014 and 14 yes. was a pretty cold year and maybe you have a, a structure and tannin, no? Yes. Yeah, there's some structure and there's some tannin and the wines were very tightly wound up uh, yeah. at first. Yeah. But they start to, they start to evolve. Actually, this wine is, it's, it's softened. It's not as as tightly, you know. It's not okay. as dense. It's not um, as angular. 
uh, as it was when it was released. And, you know, it's very exciting to see some of these wines. I like, start to look in the cellar and, you know, and, and taste them again. It's that, aha, I, you know, I, I see now where, you know, the fruit is now just as important uh, because the fruit was hidden behind the, all of the structure. And now yeah. you get to yeah. see some yeah. of those notes. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. I tried uh, 2012 a uh, few days ago and it, it was just the perfect moment. Uh, Cabernet Franc, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it, and uh, we have now, uh, uh, we can now try uh, 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 old vintage and uh, it's just very, very nice in mouse. The, the tannin are very elegant and the fruits and there is a lot of fruits, a lot of spice and it's like, like a, not a Pinot Noir, but uh, <laughs> close, <laughs> close to. No, it's um, so new things that are happening at the uh, winery and in the vineyards. Uh, the Shenan was planted, you know, initially back in 2011. Uh, there have been subsequent 12. plantings. 12. 12. 12? Okay, yeah. so uh, 2012 with the first plantings. But the um, is there any uh, is there a plan to plant more Shenan? Or we, will it stay like this for the foreseeable future? We planted uh, uh, one and a half hectares uh, two, two years ago now, in 18. So I'm actually on the block, in the okay. block. And uh, there is, a, yeah, this is a one. Wait, plant is the, you see? Yes. Yeah, the baby, baby Chanel. So... We can have a production uh, three years after planting, so not not uh, this year, but uh, the next year. And uh, and honestly, we we have not today decided if uh, what 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 we will do with that. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe uh, another cuvée of Chenin. Uh, we certainly develop uh, yeah, uh, uh, another style of, je of Chenin, but uh, for the moment, uh, we don't know exactly, and uh, it's a terroir who will, uh, who will tell us uh, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are, um, uh, I don't know, English, um, uh, I have the word, maybe, it's very technical, sorry, uh, for me. English. <laughs> okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. I don't know. Uh, yeah, over, over, over grafting. Ah, yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had to do some over grafting uh, this, uh, this spring, but with the corona, it was cancelled, and we do next year. And in final, we, we will have uh, uh, four hectares of Shona. Oh, I see. With the with the the, the grafting, yeah. So we will what, graft. Sorry. What uh what did you graft from? Was it some Cabernet Franc? Was yes, it... Cabernet yeah. Franc. Yeah, exactly. We 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 bought uh, another parcel of uh, nothing, and uh, we we will plant uh, plant the Chenin uh, next spring. We uh, and uh, we do uh, other grafting uh, ne next uh, next year too. So we, we will finish with four eight thousand Chenin. I see. Yeah. Yeah, because for anyone, you know, for anyone that's been to the uh, the estate to the winery, you will notice that there are very few vineyards around or nearby uh, Claudinel. Actually, very few, uh, uh, very few uh, crops or anything that's planted. Um, as a matter of fact, the the, the image that you see there are the only electrical, you know, or uh, wires that you'll see in the general area. It seems like, you know, they're in the small hamlet in the commune and there yeah. is nothing to, uh, to interrupt. Was this one of the reasons that uh, your, your mother and father felt very excited about the potential from a biodynamic and uh, natural standpoint? Yeah, yeah, we have a, a very nice biodiversity in the, in the winery, just close to me. 
we have uh, so we have my car but <laughs> we have the forest and uh, and uh, and uh, her vineyards and uh, and the forest and the forest and and the forest that's it it's not like a burgundy yes it is a very nice uh, polyculture yeah it's it's and, not a developed area it's it's uh, it's very quiet it's very small yeah you're 20 minutes from Tourangere, but it seems like you are, you know, uh, you really are in the, in the country. It's very rural. It's very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. True. Sure. It's true. And we have a, an amazing troglodyte cave too for, for aging wine. You, you, you put the photo just before oh, and yeah. it's just very, very naturally amazing because we don't need to, to use a, Clim, clim, uh, air conditioner, uh, yeah, and uh, the the cave are, are very cold in during the summer and uh, warmer in the wind in the winter, so we are very lucky for that. Well, um, with with that in mind, I would, is there any are there any questions out there that anyone might have? For uh, Claire, for the region, for um, you know, maybe uh, you know something else that we haven't covered about the grape varieties that are used at Claudinel. Again, you have the uh, the four grape varieties: Cabernet Franc, Grollo, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Chenin. Um, but if you do happen to have any uh, questions, feel free to uh, reach out to anyone at Wilson Daniels, or uh, you can even uh, reach out directly to the winery. I'm sure that. Both Sylvain and Claire are happy to address any of those. Um, now, it's is there? I always always bring this up about you know uh, Demeter and about biodynamics. You know, from a, um, a a a top line, a very holistic way of approaching it. Uh, for you, what does biodynamics mean? What is uh, how does it affect you in in your daily life? Um... I I really I, I really want to speak about that in French because for me, biodynamic is just uh, many many things about my mother, about uh, the environment, about me, about tasting. But there's a long 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 story about that. But I try to do <laughs> a little uh, <laughs> bits and pieces. Little things. <laughs> um, uh, so. Uh, for me, uh, um, I wrote something, where is it? Uh, yeah, so, uh, that I said, I can speak dynamic, uh, dynamic culture as good as my mother, because I'm not my mother, but, uh, I grew up in this world, uh, and, um, and uh, firstly, biodynamic uh, is a state of mind. Uh, this, me this method is the respect of the human, animal's health, uh, souls and environment respects. Uh, is learning to spend more time in the vineyard, uh, to understand the terroir, to understood, understand the terroir, yeah in order to create a, a good vine balance. And for me, when you have good vine balance, and for Sylvain too, uh, like acidity, sugar, aromas, uh, and uh, you, you, you don't need to addition any, uh, any magic potion uh, during the vinification. So for me, uh, in had to having a uh, healthy soil and taking care of yourself and others, uh, grape produce wines, uh, grape, th th this kind of grape, uh, biodynamic grapes, etc., mm -hmm. produce wine with obvious energy. For me, it is very different. We have a lot of memories of, of the wines, a lot of emotion of the wines, uh, and you have, and more the the terroir expression and uh, the, the the winemaker personality. I, I I would wholeheartedly agree, and the proof is in those young vines that you see uh, in front of you. 
uh, for a two-year-old planting to be that vibrant, to have that much energy, uh, shows the work that uh, both Sylvain and yourself and uh, your mother and father have done for so long. So thank you. Sylvain is, is working in the vineyards and do dynamic culture and try to, to put dynamic culture in the bottles. And me, my job is to, to explain and to, to exchange my opinion and my emotion about uh, the, the wine tasting from that. That's true. He, he's, he, he's, he's a brilliant, thoughtful uh, winemaker. And yeah. Uh, you're all, you, you really it's amazing. Is. Mm -mm. Well, thank you so mm -hmm. much for uh, spending some time for uh, mm, pleasure. showing us the vineyards and uh, <laughs> getting us out of our homes into uh, into the fields, should I say. So um, is there a <laughs> yeah. way for, uh, is, is Claire, is there a way for everyone to um, either follow you or follow Cladonel um, on Instagram or to see, you know, what's going on? Yeah. What but, is uh, what is your what is your uh, Twitter and Instagram for people to follow? Uh, Claire Leflev. It's it's well, easier well, than Claudinella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easier for me to to uh, to respond to the message uh, than Claudinella. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, and I, I put many photos and uh, and the process and uh, photos during the harvest uh, by my uh, Instagram. I try. By Connell, but uh, it's difficult to 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 have the to have both. Wonderful. Well, thanks again. We really appreciate it. You know, follow Claire on Instagram, and uh, you know, see what uh, see what's coming up in the future. Um, and come in Connell to to have a tasting. <laughs> and I, Alban, I hope I I will come in the US one day and uh, and learn more in, more in English more English for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, your English was fantastic. No, 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 not for the thing. Your English is much better than my French, and I would say that my uh, yeah, my, but my English French is, is, is broken it, at best. Yeah, it, it's better for me in a, a real, uh, real life <laughs> than uh, behind a, a screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, come join us. Um, you know, uh, we have uh, more IG lives that are coming up, and. You know, uh, check in on our winery partners or ourselves as we see what's going on in the vineyards. So, yeah, you can see my uh, my table. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fantastic table. <laughs> Thank you. The next time, I, the next time I'm in Anjou, I will certainly have to use that. Yeah, It'll be sure. a good way to sit down and enjoy a glass of wine. I keep it there, and I'm waiting you to to test uh, new wines. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks again. Thanks for everybody uh, joining us and uh, check back in with us soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.